Okay, everyone, we are starting on our sports logo. It's assignment 6B. Um, so you can see in the playlist, after we finish the worksheet, we're now starting on our logo. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Adobe Illustrator. I've got this opened up, let me close that. And I'm finishing up a worksheet, that's level two. Um, don't save, I don't need it. And then I can get to my main page. I can also hit the little home button and get there or, uh, or you know, just go ahead and X out of what you're doing. So I need to create a new file. I've got my blue new file button, or I can go up where it says Illustrator and click on the word file. Either way, file new or click on it here, file new. It's gonna give you the same result. So I wanna choose for all of my options. If I go up to where it says print, there should be an option for letter. And a letter is a standard size sheet of paper. So I'm gonna click on print, then letter. Over here, this is in points, 612 by 719. I don't know what that means. So I'm gonna change this to inches, eight and a half inches by 11 inches. That's a normal sheet of paper. So go ahead and make that change. Title it with your last name, underscore, first name, underscore, sport. And I want my orientation to be sideways, a landscape orientation, which will mean my width is 11 inches and my height is 8.5 inches. Get that all set up. Make sure your color mode is CMYK. Your raster effects are high. And we're going to hit create. That'll give you a nice, clean, white rectangle, and you're good to go. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is go back into Chrome, and I'm going to go to sportslogos.net, which, of course, I've actually already opened elsewhere. Now, once I'm in sportslogos.net, you can go to their main page. You can see there's all these different options. Um, the easiest thing to do is we're going to find a good logo to create for this project. So I'm going to go to football. Why not? Um, and I'm going to choose a logo. Now... Some of these are easier than others. And you wanna start with an easy logo. So if I go in, you got all kinds of junk. Um, but I would say for a starter logo, the Bills, uh, the Cardinals, the Bengals, those are really easy. Now you could do the Colts. You could even get away with the Green Bay Packers. The Cowboys, that's too easy. You know, like that's nothing. Texans is pretty easy. Those are all good starter ones, you know? Now, some of these are very complex. You're gonna do more than one logo. Commanders would be easy. Um, so after you've done an easy one, you might later go in and do um, a more complex one at a later time, not right now. So that might be something like the Titans, the Bucks. Um, you could go in the Eagles, the Vikings. Those are getting more complex. Dolphins, the Rams. Um, I would not do the Raiders because that's just too complex. Um, so start simple. You can always do more complex later, but I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna choose the Bengals. It's an easy one. I'm gonna click on their most recent logo. And that's great. Now I've got the logo. Now, if I want this logo, what I'm gonna do is right here with it large, I gotta click all the way through so that it's large. Oh my goodness, I hate all these ads. But we're gonna go and I'm just gonna click and drag that onto my desktop and now it's sitting there as a PNG file. And then I can get out of Chrome and I can go back to Illustrator. So now I'm back in my Illustrator document. This PNG over here, I'm just gonna drag and drop it on. And if I click, it'll show up. Now, this thing is huge. I need to scale it down. To scale it, I need to hold down my Shift key. If I don't hold my Shift key, when I go to size it, I could accidentally squash it or make it really weird. And that's no good for anyone. Right? That's just random. Instead, I'm going to go back. I'm going to hold my shift key. That way, when I scale it, it stays in the correct proportion. So I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to set it off to the side. So I've got room for the logo and I've got room for it again over here to the side. So I'm going to leave it here, right here on the side. And you can see I can click off of it, but I can click back on it. And now it's selected. It's a size I like. I'm good. Over here, I've got my layers panel. So find your layers panel, click on that, and you can see it expands it out. I can expand out the layer, and this is the little linked file. And I can tell it's selected because it's got a little square next to it that's lit up. With my photo selected, I'm gonna actually take my opacity and I'm gonna drop it down to like, I don't know, 30 something percent. Anywhere in the 30s is fine. So that it's easy to trace. I can see what I'm doing, but it'll help me also see what I've made. Now I'm gonna go ahead and on my layers panel, I'm gonna click in between the eyeball and the little arrow and I'm gonna lock it. So now that layers panel is locked and I can go ahead, 
I can't select this anymore. I can't do anything. It's locked down. And that's actually a good thing. I also want to go ahead and pull my layers panel out and squash it a little bit so you guys can see it. Um, I'm going to then click the little plus sign on my layers panel to create a new layer on top of it. And now anything I make is going to be in that new layer separate from my original photo. All right. Now keep in mind, if I go ahead and I'm like, great, I'm done with my layers panel um, and I exit out, it's going to be gone. It's missing over here. So if layers goes missing, you can always go up to window layers and click on it and it'll come back. Or I can always go back to my workspace button and hit workspace, reset essentials classic. Oh, and it brings it back. So now I got my layers again. I'm good to go. All right. So I'm in my new top layer and now I'm going to go ahead and start to think about how am I going to make this shape? Now, a lot of people are going to grab the pen tool. And the pen tool is great. We love the pen tool. Uh, give me one second. Hold on. Okay. Now that I have got my logo and it's locked down and I've got my new layer, I'm going to go ahead and think about how am I going to make this? So I'm grabbing my pen tool and I could just go ahead and start clicking and tracing using the pen tool. Now I'm going to have an issue. It's starting to fill white and that's going to cover up stuff and I'm not going to be able to see it. So keep in mind when you use your pen tool, you want to come over here where it has your fill and your stroke. You want to click on fill and then click the red strike through. And now my fill is turned off. So it's just going to be a black line. Now I could do this and I could go ahead and I could trace the whole B with my pen tool and I could work at it and try to figure it out. We've learned how to use the pen tool in other uh, videos and it might be close, but it might not be. So I'm going to show you a different way. I actually don't want you just to default to the pen tool. So let me get rid of this because I think there's smarter ways to do this. When we think about this, we've learned about shapes. We've learned about fills. We've learned about shape builder. So here is what I'm going to have you do. Think about what shapes first I could use. Okay. Well, I could use my rectangle tool for this part right here. And I could click and I could make a rectangle and then keep in mind, I could take my direct select tool, click on this corner and I could round it. I could click on these two corners and I could round them. And that's going to be a lot easier than using the pen tool. Now I've done this once it's reflected down here. How could I make that happen? Oh, that's right. I could select it. Like I've learned in previous videos, grab my reflect tool option, click reflect it or reflect it horizontally and make a copy. And now I made a copy and it's down here and I can just nudge it. Awesome. So I'm cruising. I'm doing some stuff that's a lot easier. Same thing. You know, I could go here and sure, maybe with my pen tool, um, I do want to go, I don't know, part way around. I'm going to do a straight line there and I'll show you why later, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to make this. I'm going to do it really, really quickly just for the sake of time. Let's say I make this quickly and I'm going also here. I might just like cheat it and come back here and I'll show you why in a second. I'm going around and uh, I'm using my tools, hopefully the right way. Eh, that's a little low. Get my curve just how I want it. Okay. And then the reason I went here and just did this as a straight line is because again, I can select these two points and I can round them and that does the work for me. Same thing. I could always, if I got like a wonky line like this, I could select it, grab my smooth tool. I have to reselect it, which is annoying. Select it, grab my smooth tool and I could like fix that a little bit. That's a little bit better. Okay. So now I got a decent shape. Um, I'm going to use my rounded rectangle for this and I'm just going to round a rectangle and I'm going to make these curves match those curves. Now, remember I could go ahead then and select all this and use shape builder to chop it out. And now it's perfect. And I know it's perfect. Same thing. Maybe I use the pen tool for, um, these stripes. If I click right on my line, I'm going to have an issue. So I might need to go a little bit outside of my line, but I could click. So I clicked and now with my pencil, I'm going to click down here and I'm going to drag it. And 
I might be able to get. Oh, see, that's going to be mad at me because let me let me zoom out so you guys can see. So I'm going to click and drag and bend that so it lines up really well with that edge. Great. Now it wants to keep curving. So I'm going to click back on my center point. So it's a sharp point again. And now I can go and I can drag that. Now, do I want to have to retrace? Let me see if I can zoom in. Do I want to have to retrace this line I've already traced? No. I'm just going to go out here and have this big extra funky looking thing. And you might think, well, why? What's the point? I'm going to show you. So if this were, let's say this was filled white. And let's say this one was filled black. If I were to select both, remember I can use shape builder, hold down option and just chop off this extra piece. And now that got clipped right alongside the shape that was already made. And that's easy now. Like I don't have to worry about anything. Oops. I want no stroke, no fill. Um, and then I didn't have to like remake it. Like it just, I'd already made the shape. So it was easy to just kind of like use the edge that I already made and use shape builder. So that's what you need to start thinking about as you're using this software is how can I be smart with the tools that uh, we've learned on all of those illustrator worksheets? You know, there were things that we showed you for a reason. It's not just because, you know, we were messing with you. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do this really fast. I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing. I'm making these shapes and again, I'm going off the edge and I don't even care because I can just use shape builder later and I got to close it. That's the big thing. I closed my shape, always have closed shapes. So I select it. I grab shape builder, option, click, option, click, option, click, option, click, option, click. And now I got all my shapes. So I got some shapes, it's black and white. I can select it if I'm done and drag it off to the side. That's great. It's pretty close. I like it, but now I got to add color. So here's what I'm actually going to do to add color. Sorry, I'm kind of a stickler. Okay. I go over here. I grab my layers panel. I'm going to unlock my original photo. I'm going to expand this out. I'm going to select my original picture by clicking here, or I could click back on it here and I'm going to bring my opacity back up to hundred. So there it is. Okay. Now I can select the B shape and I can go over to my eyedropper tool and then I'm going to click on the orange boom. And it's going to perfectly match that orange. Go back to my selection tool, select this stripey guy, eyedropper, boom, it's black. Go back to my selection tool, click on my shape, grab my eyedropper, select it. Boom. It's black. These should perfectly match. They look pretty close. Now, for some reason, this looks a little bit different than this orange. I think my eyes are just playing tricks on me. So it's there. So I got my two. And if I did it well, then we shouldn't be able to tell a difference between which one is the original and which one is the one that we made. So actually, because of that, take your type tool and just underneath it, I want you to write um, original. Actually, no, I think I said in school, you write in vector or original. I'm not sure which one I honestly can't remember. And I don't want to go check it in the middle of making this video. So whatever, there we go. Can I type, um, you're going to tell me either vector original, either one is fine over here. You're going to label which one is yours, mine. Oh, see that, that, there we go. This is the original cause that's the original. And this is the one you made in illustrator, which is vector illustration. So this is the vector. That's the one you made. Hello, Mr. McKay, wake up. Okay. And then up here, just type this with your last name, underscore first name, underscore sport. Um, and that is the format. So then I can go, I've got it. It's labeled. It's got my two original and that's where I do my file export, export as I export it as a PNG file to my desktop or my downloads. Just make sure you know where it's going. I'm gonna click downloads. Um, use artboards is always smart. I'm gonna hit export and then I'm gonna have that PNG. White background, um, high is great. High is fine and okay. Now, after you finish, then you could go back into sportslogos.net and you could choose a more complex logo and you could create a new document. Let's say I want to do this one and you could work on this. Now try to think of things that are going to give you tools. Like I did the Bengals logo. There was no like 
text. This is just an illustration. So if you did one that was just an illustration, I would drag and drop it. Maybe you go and do one that has more like text, like the NFL logo itself. Or if you are ready to do, if you did a second one and that went well and you're ready for a third one, you know, there's a lot, if you go to like, maybe let's say with football. So if you go to National Football League, but then you scroll down, if you start looking at some of the championship logos, these are getting really complex. That would be like the most complex. Um, or if you're looking for a really complex one, soccer is great. A lot of European football clubs um, have some really, really great logos that are more complex because they have like old stuff in them and a lot of details. They have text, they have multiple strokes. Oh wait, you know how to put multiple strokes on an object. Um, they have shapes. Um, anyways, you're going to find a club and you'll be good or a logo um, and you're going to keep working your way more and more complex and see how far you can go. All right, that's it. You should be ready to start making.